Hello ladies and gents and welcome to week four. We're a month in. Congratulations. You've made it this far and this week we get to start writing our first major project for the class which is very exciting. Uh, so this week hopefully Sunday night you wrote your thesis worksheet um, and are turning that in. I'll give you feedback on those thesis worksheets to make sure that they're um, a good start to a thesis. I'll try and make some revision suggestions for you. Uh, there's also a thesis statement video in the modules that I think you're going to find really, really helpful. So do make sure to watch that as you're working on your thesis statement revisions after you turn in that assignment on Sunday, because we should continue to improve our writing throughout this week. Um, so you're going to be writing your first draft this week, Monday and Tuesday. On Wednesday, you're going to be working on an assignment that's going to give you some more um, information about MLA sources and how to format. Uh, and then on the 29th, you're going to continue to write the first draft of your essay because on the 30th, you're turning your essay in for your first round of peer review. Now, I know peer review sometimes feels like a mixed bag for folks. Some folks really like it because they really like the feedback. Some folks feel like maybe they don't get the best feedback or they feel uncomfortable giving feedback. Um, but there are a lot of studies in educational research that say that peer review is highly beneficial uh, to everyone who really truly invests in it because not only are you carefully examining someone else's work and giving them feedback which helps them but it's making you a more critical reader and writer and so in turn it's making your draft better as well not only are you benefiting from someone else's feedback but you're becoming a more critically engaged writer in the process which is making you better at editing your own work which is exciting so yay for peer review it's very good for us uh, even if we don't like it, like dentist appointments or stuff like that. You know it's good for you, so you do it. Uh, so this peer review process, you're going to be uploading your essay to the discussion board. So upload your essay as a Word document, preferably. Um, attach it to your discussion post, and then you are going to review the person who posts directly below you. So if you're the first person who posts, you're going to review person number two who posts and so on and so forth down the line until you get to the very bottom. And whoever is the last person who posts, they're going to review the person up at the very top. So everybody should get at least one review from somebody in class, which is exciting. So you're going to upload your Word doc and post it by 5 p.m. Then once you do that, you're going to complete the peer review response form. And so I'll show that to you here. It's a very um, directed sheet where you're looking for specific things in the essay. And all of the things that I've got on the sheet for you to look for are tied to the rubric and the way I'm going to be grading it. So by going through it ahead of time using this worksheet, you're really going to help your partner uh, know how to revise because every one of these points here is tied to a rubric category. So you're going to be looking closely through this worksheet. You're going to be giving uh, meaningful feedback. So don't just give yes, no answers. Try and give at least a complete sentence response for each of these questions. Um, help them out. The more detail you give, the more beneficial this worksheet's going to be. And I know you're hoping for benefit as well. So do make sure to help each other out, right? And then uh, post your filled out peer review response, response form as a reply to your classmate. I'm going to change this till Sunday. So you're going to have the weekend to do this, so you'll have time. So you're going to need to post that response by Sunday. And if we use this system, everyone should get feedback as long as the people who uploaded their draft participate. So fingers crossed, y'all come through, be awesome, all that good stuff. Uh, if you have technical difficulties with Word, there's some links to how to do it through Google Docs, but um, honestly, that's not really a problem most of the time. Now, the final note I want to say about peer review is that it's very tempting to just be like, oh, good job, smiley face, you're great, that was just so fun to read. And all that's great. It makes us feel warm and fuzzy on the inside. But it doesn't actually make our grades any better because it doesn't give us constructive feedback on how to revise and improve. And so when we're just giving that nice, feel-good, mamby-pamby kind of stuff, uh, what we're really saying to our partner is, I don't care about your success. I'm not invested enough to try and help you. So suck it, loser. You're going to fail. And that's really not what we want to tell each other in class, right? That would be a bummer. It'd be sad that that was the message we were trying to convey. So when you're doing these peer review sheets, be brutal. 
from a place of love and friendship, of course, uh, rip the essay apart and make lots of constructive feedback because this is how someone's going to get better. People are relying on these peer reviews. So invest in the process. Yes, it does take a little time, but invest in it. Give it your very best shot to give them feedback. And hopefully you'll get that kind of really good feedback in return and your essays will benefit as a result. So really good stuff coming in our peer review. So do make sure to invest in that process. And that's what we're working on this week. It's all very exciting. Everything you need, as always, is in the modules tab. So if we go into our English 101 class and we click on the modules tab, um, all of the supporting materials are in here. So we've got all those PowerPoints about Murder on the Orient Express. We have all the supporting materials. If you've not yet read The Psychological Approach to Revenge and Justice, read the dang thing. Like, <laughs> I cannot emphasize this enough. This article is going to help you so much when you write your essay. Like, quote this article, use it all over the place in your essay. This article is going to really help you write. So read it, understand it, quote it in your essay, use it as one of your sources. Uh, and then all the stuff you're going to need to write your essay is here. Especially, I want to emphasize the recorded lecture on the essay prompt and outline and the thesis walkthrough lecture. So watch both of these. If you haven't yet, you're shooting yourself in the foot. Like, I don't want to overemphasize how helpful these lectures are, but they're insanely helpful, guys. Like, please watch them. It's going to make your grades so much better. Um, because if you don't follow the outline and you don't follow the requirements I have for the thesis statement, you will not do well on the essay. Like, that's just how it goes. So please watch these videos. I want to give you a good grade, but I can't if your essay is not following the prompt. So do that and reach out if you have any questions after watching the videos. Uh, everything else you need to be successful is here. And I'm really looking forward to seeing how your essays come together after finishing Murder on the Orient Express. And oh my gosh, isn't that just the best ending ever? Like The fact that Mrs. Hubbard is actually Linda Arden in disguise, and she planned for years to get her revenge this way. Like, she found everyone who Ratchet had victimized and gathered them together and made this insanely complex plan to kill this dude and, ideally, for everyone to get away scot-free. Um, so that's amazing. Bravo for her. Like, if ever I need to plan revenge, I know who I'm going to go ask. Just kidding, she's fictional. Uh, and I also loved how Poirot kind of struggled with the ending. Like, he was very confused. He's a very black and white kind of person. Like, it's either good or it's bad. You're either guilty or not guilty. That's definitely how his brain works. And so to be presented with this kind of morally ambiguous gray area was really interesting. Because Poirot just didn't really know what to do with it. And he wrestled mightily with it. As I think some of us as readers do as well, because we know it's wrong to kill people. But also, Ratchet killed a little girl. And that's worse? Like, it gets really morally murky. Never is murder okay, but he also killed a little girl. And we don't want him to kill more little kids. So, like, maybe we're doing everyone a favor by killing him? It's tricky. Tricky. So I'm really excited to see how your essays come together and how you make sense of the ending here. Uh, so have a great week, guys. Reach out with any questions, and I'm here to help.